there, my name is Lauren and I'm an interpreter here at Royal Botanical Gardens. Today I went on a walk through our Kipax Gardens and noticed that a lot of our milkweed is starting to seed. Now these seeds are little dots attached to all this fun white fluffy stuff. You might notice being carried away by the wind. Milkweed is just one type of plant that uses wind as a mechanism for seed dispersal. Let's take a closer look at how they do this. This here is a milkweed pod, and inside these pods are hundreds of seeds. Each one of those little brown dots you can see there is one seed. And each of these seeds is attached to all these white fluffy fibers. Let's take a closer look at one of these seeds. These fibers are called pappus, and they attach to the seed and act sort of like a parachute to help catch the wind and gently glide the seed to a new sprouting spot. This here is another type of seed that has a pappus. Many of you will be able to recognize it right away. And yes, this is a dandelion. Here's one dandelion seed and I'll zoom in so you can get a closer look here. The seed is that brown speck at the end and it's attached to the pappus by this long stem. On a calm day, the wind might only carry these seeds a few meters, but if they catch a very strong gust, they could travel several kilometers. Here's another flying seed you might recognize. This is the seed of a maple tree, often called a maple key because of its shape. Now the round bit at the end here is the seed, and you'll notice that it isn't attached to the fluffy pappus like the milkweed or dandelion. Instead, it's attached to this broad wing, and this wing helps slow the seed down as it flutters to the ground in a very characteristic spiral. Here's another seed with wings. This seed belongs to the hop tree, and you'll notice here that the seed is this dark spot in the middle and the wing wraps all the way around the seed, kind of like a cartoon UFO. While it looks a bit different than the maple key, this wing still helps the seed flutter to the ground. The next seed we're gonna look at here is pretty special. This is the seed of a catalpa tree. And if I zoom in here, you'll see that it uses two different ways to catch the wind. On the ends here, you can see those familiar white pappus fibers just like the milkweed or dandelion. And in the middle here, you can see the broad wing, just like the hop seed and maple seed. So some seeds can use both. This is the last flying seed I want to show you today, and it might be a bit of a surprise. Do you recognize this? It might look like a stick, but this is actually a vanilla bean pod. And vanilla is another seed that can fly. The vanilla bean contains thousands of seeds, Let's cut this open and see if we can find some. Here are some of the vanilla bean seeds, and these seeds are so small, I'm gonna put a dandelion seed here beside them just to help you compare. The vanilla bean seeds look so small, they could even be specks of dirt. And because they're so small, they don't need the help of a pappus or a wing to help them catch the breeze. They'll get carried away by the wind just as they are. It's amazing to think that plants have evolved so many different ways to disperse their seeds by wind. You have the fluffy white pappus, the broad wings, and also just by making the seeds really, really small like the vanilla. If you're interested in learning more, we have an experiment for you to try at home where you can make your own model of a maple key. An experiment to see how you can make it stay in the air the longest. Thank you so much for watching and we hope to see you around at Royal Botanical Gardens.